So it's Harrell, you, Puffy, Ziv, and a bunch of Southsiders. And, and what Puffy makes kind of a, an announcement? Yeah, that was, that was stupid as hell too, you know. What did you actually hear? What was the words, if, the best you can remember, what he says? Shit, he said he didn't give us anything for them dudes here, you know? Yeah. We'll give you anything for these guys' head? Yeah. He, uh, he said it in front of all the people, I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? In Anaheim? Yeah. That was a clip from Murder Rap, the docu-series, and that was Keefe D talking about P. Diddy in a hotel room saying he'd pay a million dollars to take out Tupac and Suge. And now we're learning that P. Diddy recently, uh, we all we kind of had a, a sense from allegations and rumors that he was not a good person, is on the lam. His homes have been raided, and we're going to get in on all that. So we are talking today on The Dust Up about Biggie versus Tupac through this new lens of P. Diddy allegations. You listen to The Dust Up. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Madrigal. I'm here with Jay Larson. We are on a show called The Dust Up. We're still relatively new. We're still figuring it out. But what we do know is we're talking about beefs, feuds, melees. And I like where we're going with it. I do. I do, too. We're we're finding our footing. You know what the show has been and and kind of evolved into? And again, thank you for your patience if you're listening to these. You're welcome. Oh, you're talking to everybody else. (laughs) Well, you too. And... What we're doing is you're talking about these beefs. We're not claiming to be experts and historical experts. We are going to uh, be pulling more quotes and sound bites. We are going to be talking and, and interviewing some folks down the line and bringing in some experts and playing those sound bites. But really, it's like, how does this all relate back to us? Do we have stories from why, our personal yeah, Why lives? do we want to like do these? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Obviously, this music that we're talking about today fueled our childhood in a ton of ways right sure i mean i am a little bit older than you so i am some people might say a lot (laughs) it's true no but for sure but like tupac for me as a kid we were like all about tupac that's hilarious because you're an east coast guy and you're all about tupac i clearly think that biggie was a better rapper than tupac shaker well did you see i i watched this are we okay right now? Do you want to just jump into the, all, what we're talking about? No, I think what we're going to be talking about is this beef because rappers have beefed for a very long time, ever since there has been rap. I mean, there's there's so many beefs. We got Migos versus a guy named Joe Budden who gets into it. He gets in. Joe Budden gets into it with Drake. There's Kanye West versus Jay Z. There's Lil Kim versus Foxy Brown. There's Gucci Mane versus Young Jeezy. The Game versus Fifty Cent. Chief Keef versus Takashi. Don't don't forget Chief Keef and uh, Keefy D. They had a big beef. They're like, who's the bigger <laughs> Keef? Who's here? the bigger Keef? The the Keef beef. They you call ever smoke Keef? You know, I've seen it, but I don't. I think I think Keef is what you sprinkle on yeah. the top. It's like the resin from weed. Yeah, you're a big Keef guy. I know, but I had a buddy who was a, a big Keef guy, and it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Chief Keef knows all about it. Nicki Minaj versus Cardi B, Eminem versus Machine Gun Kelly. That's probably we're going to get into some of these. Kanye West versus Drake. Drake has a lot of them. Drake gets into it with people. He gets it into it with Meek Mill. He gets into it with Pusha T. But don't you feel like everyone kind of goes at Drake just because like? Here's the thing, right? Because we're going to talk a little. We're going to huh? He was on Degrassi. Degrassi High, whatever he was. Like yeah, he was like wasn't he like a Disney kid? It was like a Canadian series. And that's a big thing that's going to come into play here. Because what you say is Biggie's a better rapper than you think Tupac was. But Tupac was a poet. He was. He was a poet. It's a different, and, different um, thing. There are a lot of, uh, you. one would argue that they're all poets. I would say that 100% as well. But I'm saying there was one clip I watched where it's like Pac and Biggie sitting together and they're they're riffing. You know what I mean? They're just freestyling. And Tupac's like, all right, I'll freestyle. Let's, f- yeah, we can freestyle. We can, all right, let me find it. Let me find it. And then he freestyles and then he, and it's not great. And he hands it to Biggie and Biggie just 
slays because mm-hmm. that's what he's great at. But Pac, I think, would be better at like writing it when he had a POV. It's a lot comes into stand up, you know, like a guy who can just do crowd work and be innately funny versus a guy who gets up with like a big POV and is trying to get a point across. Remember when stand up used to be not political, but like you had a voice and you wanted to get something. Look, George Carlin had something he wanted to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I, I prefer the stand-up comics with something to say. Yeah. I mean, I get it. And sometimes you just like, oh, just let me let go for an hour. Sure. Just let me let go for an hour. With start, Pac was like... Start humping that bar stool. But, I'm, but, but even like just talking about surface level stuff that everyone can relate to, I'm not saying that's what Biggie was doing, but Tupac, everything he said, like he had a message. He was a son of a Black Panther, man. So... Uh, in terms of all of the rap feuds, this is number one because I mean, both guys died at the of, end of yeah, this. Man. Yeah, it was a deadly feud. But then we talked about there's a number of things at play here. Would you say it's Shakespearean? Yeah, I would because I would too. And so while it was a feud between families, it really had these you know point people and the Romeo and Juliet of it all. Totally. And um, it symbolizes a broader East Coast versus West Coast rivalry of the 1990s. Which I think we could completely blame on the media. I think there there are allegations that Vibe magazine and articles they, that really blew this whole thing up. They blew it. Do you remember, what was the, was it the Essence Awards? Was the first one where uh, Suge got up and basically he was wearing red and he was like, if Source Awards. Source Awards. At that one, when dudes would get up there, the 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 lower third would say Suge Knight, Death Row Records, parentheses, West Coast. That's fucking crazy. It is. It is. So initially, what's interesting, and I think we should talk about all the players, because there's really four people, and then we want to spend some time talking about P. Diddy and where he is, because you've got these two horrible people running these businesses Shug and p so you use bad boy and death row and you got suge knight and you've got sean p diddy combs wait will we say there's three beefs we're talking about essentially tupac and biggie suge and diddy and then east coast west coast sure okay he was puffy back then puffy i know yeah right he now. was puffy like first he of all anyone who's puffy. fucking name yeah because it was too soft because when puffy came around i thought he was like a little bitch him and mace and then mace became a the magic dragon, right? I mean, <laughs> Puff. Yeah, who was that? Puffy. Garfunkel and Oates? Yeah, Puffy. No, Puffy. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Peter, Paul, and Mary. All right. You don't Peter, have to yell at Peter, me. Peter, Peter, Paul, and Mary. So the raid on Sean Diddy Combs homes in Los Angeles and Miami just recently by Homeland Security was part of a federal sex trafficking investigation and followed a series of lawsuits where he faced accusations including a male music producer in a, a lawsuit claiming he gang raped a 17 year old girl bananas and another lawsuit from november alleged that he traffic raped and beat r&b singer cassie over 10 years now that settlement in that case led to all of these others coming forward and what I was thinking about in terms of the Me Too allegations is that we really haven't seen those come out in the you know the black community, music community, uh, rap community like they are now. And this could be apparently you hear rumors that Jay Z is next, and which to me again has to come from this deep rooted. You're looking at the history of all of this and why why. You have these very wealthy people who are capable of sleeping with any gorgeous woman. You sort of think about Bill Cosby or any sort of serial rapist. And you could date and have sex with really anybody you wanted. Beautiful women. Yeah, I mean. Or guys if that's what they're into. Cosby, that thing, you got to just imagine there's just something off mentally with that man. Yeah, they're, they're, but, but I'm with saying some that of these other things, you have to think about it like power, power and who knows where you come from and drugs, dude, drugs. I mean, part of the things that were going on, even not just with bad boy, but death row, the shit that was going on in the offices at death row records was insane. Yeah. And so sure, you have these two big camps that are doing very well at the time. 
in Death Row and in Bad Boy. Do you know what they called the studio or Daddy's House? That was Bad Boy, right? Bad Boy's Daddy's House. Ugh. Now, knowing I, what we know now with what's potentially going daddy. on there. Daddy. Yeah. You like a girl calls you daddy. You're dating a girl. No one has ever, no woman I've ever dated or been with sexually has Hi, ever. Hi, daddy. They do a baby voice. They go, Hi, daddy. Come here, daddy. I, what do you do? I, I'd be like, Yeah, I, I think we're going to need to stop that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, I'm sorry. I'm, I would I'm never, I would, at, it would be over after that. I would never date. I don't that let my person. kids call me daddy. I say, You call me pops. Dad. No, I want pops. You like pops? Yeah. But no, that, that. It's gross. <sighs> daddy's it's gross. Awesome. So, what the thing is with, for me, with P Diddy, Puff Daddy, whatever the Sean Diddy Combs, you, you trash. I just never was a huge fan. I just thought he was like soft, and I think that might be the problem. Sometimes is like that he's trying to overcompensate, overcompensate this, this thing, you know, because so many like, dude, that, this is the other thing. I think you look at Bad Boy Records; they were like, yeah, man, we're just like, yeah, we'll have beef, and Death Row was like, yo, man. <laughs> They like it, there are times that they would say like executives or people who worked at the label would come to work and there'd just be like twelve dudes up at death row and some of them just got out of jail and they're coming to Suge for work and they that's these dudes were straight up gangbangers. Well, that's the thing is you have these these rappers rapping about gang life, trying to be part of something that they maybe weren't necessarily part of and think they need to and think they need to. And so a lot of things are feeding into this. The media, like you mentioned, there's articles being written. They're saying which coast you rep when you're winning an award. There are also these bad actors hanging around. There's all these actual street hoods that have murder raps. So there's a criminal element hanging around both companies. Yeah. And if you look at it, Tupac is a Drake, dude. Tupac went to theater school. He wanted. He was an actor. Remember, he was Grew acting in, in Giant. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they had to move to Marin, Marin. City. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they part were of like, Digital Underground, the Humpty Dance. God, I love Digital Underground. Ooh, ooh, I see guys and girls dance. Oh, I love Digital Underground. So let's just a quick rundown of the feud. We can start there, I guess. Initially, they're friends. Yeah, they were friends. Like Tupac discovered Biggie. Saw him was like this dude's Dude, shit. Brings him on stage. And Biggie was like, Go. is sleeping on his couch. There's a mentorship thing. Wait, can we say one thing real quick? Do you know how old each of these men were when they de- died? Died. Twenty five. Long yeah. prolific careers at that point. Uh, Tupac. Every we all knew Tupac. That means when he was like nineteen, he started popping off. And Biggie, they died at twenty five years old. I, it's insane to me. The Quad Studio shooting is a big landmark. This happens on November 30th, 1994. Uh, Tupac was shot and robbed in the lobby of Quad's recording studios in Manhattan. He survived. Now, he was warned by Biggie not to work with that producer who he believed set him up. So now, there were other people with Tupac in that, in that lobby. Yes. And he's the only one who got shot. Correct, because they were trying to take his chain. That was well, a, that was that was a robbery. He's the only one that was robbed. They didn't. No one else got anything taken off. He, they were those people who shot him and try attempted to rob him. Were sent to rob him. Yeah, by the person that they were going to meet and work with. <sighs> now that blows back. After Tupac's shooting, Biggie releases "Who Shot You." Well, no, hold on a second, because the, the other thing is I saw and looked into a ton of the stuff about Tupac. He f- dragged his ass into the elevator and got upstairs with four four shots and then told everyone what's going on. He's patting himself down with paper towels, and he said that no one what, could look at him. What, like a bounty? I think, was, I think it was a quicker picker-upper. Yeah, man, you need the quicker picker-upper. That'd be a great commercial. Just like, <laughs> been shot. You think these competitors can freaking clean up blood? Look no. at this. But he's sitting in the chair, and he said that nobody would look him in the eye. Like, he he said, like, he got up there, told everyone what what happened. No one could look him in the eye, and he just knew something was up. He knew that they were responsible. That was Diddy and Biggie up there. Yeah, Biggie. No, Biggie. Biggie Biggie, Biggie was not up there. Biggie didn't get there yet. Biggie Biggie 
showed up late and the police by the time biggie got there the police were there and they weren't letting anyone up because they were like investigating everything but diddy was upstairs he said he wouldn't even look him in the eye crazy so then this who shot you song comes out that tupac interpreted as a taunt about the shooting although biggie and his team claim that the song was recorded before the incident and was not even about tupac Timing of the release exacerbated the uh, tension there. But this is also when Tupac's in jail, right? So then there's this media amplification that we talk about, correct? Yes. Like escalating the feud, uh, framing it as a rivalry for supremacy in the rap world. And then the rivalry between these two companies. Then Hit 'em Up comes out in 1996. Okay, but we got to talk about the fact that Tupac is making music, right? He's acting in movies. He made it. He's making us. He made a song about like uh, elevating women and the way women are viewed because it was such a negative view of women inside hip hop culture. You know what I mean? And then he got accused of what it was sodomy. Like he went away to Rikers Island. He went away for a while, and that's when Shoot 'Em Up or Who Shot You came out. Biggie released that song and at the same time this is when like no one bailed they could have got him out of jail Tupac right big uh Suge finally got him out and like paid for him to get out am I following this correctly sure okay anyway I do also think that like Suge I mean we'll get into Suge later I'm oh, sorry keep going so hit him up comes out Tupac releases a vicious diss track directly targeting Biggie Puffy and others associated with Bad Boy the song includes claims that Tupac had slept with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans, and that further inflames the situation. Right. And Tupac's girlfriend, I saw this interview with her, she said when Pac was in jail, he told her, I'm going to fuck Faith Evans when I get out of jail. He, he his whole time. He manifested like, it. He sure did. Yeah, he's got a, a, if a anyone vision out board. There, yeah, if anyone out there is doing positive affirmations every day, know that you can do it. Yep. Pick somebody to fuck. And go fuck. Go for it. So, like, he was in jail. Like, he changed when he was in jail. He thought that Biggie had done this. He thought Biggie was behind it. I think he needed some sort of motivation. Also, think about just spiraling in jail. If you could try to empathize with somebody Oof. in jail, alone with their thoughts. Alone with their thoughts. And thinking about this situation and just really, obviously, he's writing. Yeah. But he's he's also mentally just going over this, over this, over and again. You know, are you? How do you sleep? Laying down. <laughs> what do you mean? How do you I sleep, sleep through the night? I mean, yes, yes. Are you waking up thinking about? Do you have that river of twenty five thousand thoughts playing through your head? Like, no. I I have it sometimes when you have something major going on. Sure. And you or if I'm extremely busy, I start to wake up and start to like have anxiety and panic about all of the life stresses and I have some personal stuff happening right now where um I'm just up at night. I can't just imagine being shot, being in jail, thinking you know exactly how that played out and you're yep. just in there going Oh, this is and and P.S. Biggie visited him in jail. Biggie visited him, and I think he just kept building it up. Who knows who's talking to him in jail? What mm -hmm. he's hearing? Maybe Suge's trying to fuel this this East Coast West Coast thing, letting him know it was putting it in his head. Who knows? So it's a uh, connections between this criminal element and as well as these, you know, bad actors in these companies vying for this rap supremacy. Now, let's talk about, we are going to get into comedy beefs on here, but it's like, <laughs> it, just think about the life and death of it all, too. It's like, we have, you look about the comedy beefs, mm -hmm. and there's nothing <clears throat> even close to any of this have you ever heard of a comedy like fist fight or people actually fighting is there or is it all verbal yeah i've heard of fist fight oh yeah who fought at the comedy store oh is that when bobby and ari were yeah, getting into bobby it? and ari yeah but that was over women inside com it was it was never about comedy you know what i mean yeah. well there was mencia and rogan 
But that was that about, that was about comedy, but that never escalated to no. blows. No, no. I don't think it, we don't care. This this thing was general. Don't for, don't. Uh, are we not forgetting that all of Death Row they were actual gang members who had actually. I don't know if they've killed people, but I'm pretty sure they had killed people. Like I know that everyone was working around them had killed people. I mean, you got anyone in your comedic circle, Al, that's killed people? Al, there are a couple comedians that have done time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, they're like. Ali At the end Sadiq of the day, it's hilarious. Yeah, he's, he's hilarious, so amazing, funny. amazing. The talent level, it's and a lot of this is just getting caught up in the wrong situation at the wrong time, and that's for and some of these guys were just born into it, and they were gonna. There was no way they were getting out of Compton, and that's who they were, and that's why Tupac, when he finally he he joined the Crips, there was a one of the security guards. Not security guards. He ran security for the Crips and for Death Row. Said he could. He knew the day that uh, um, Tupac like committed to the Crips, and they were like, "He goes, but this is the thing. In order to get into the Crips, you had to either do a drive by or you had to like go beat someone." And Pac hadn't done any of that, so he had to live up to it. That's why that that fight in Vegas that the night he got shot, he, he had that brawl. They targeted that that uh crip in the lobby this dude was like yeah that's just tupac trying to fit in and trying to be like oh prove that he's a a blood uh yeah a blood now you said you liked you're a big fan of uh tupac yeah who who is your favorite rapper if you could pick like your top three <sighs> i have no idea because i'm not going with the guys that are threatening to kill people on a regular basis as my top guys i i love tribe called quest I mean, Tribe is love, insane. Love Tribe Called Quest. I love Tribe. It just it does not get old for me. I could play it over and over again. I love it every single time. Yeah, I love the Far Side. Far Side's dope, but I yeah. mean, Pass Me By is just kind of stands out for me. I don't know, like a depth of their work. Um, let's see. I think Fat Lip has a little store in Eagle Rock. Really? He's, he's close by. And then I'm trying to think who else. I mean, look. Love De La, Nas. Dude, Nas is the shit, dude. Sure. My boy Eddie introduced me to Nas when we were in college. and I, I love Kanye. We Nas talked about the, in our Kanye versus Taylor Swift episode. I love Kanye. Kanye is an amazing rapper. Yep. Jay-Z. Snoop. Yep. Childish Gambino. You couldn't consider him a rapper? Sure. I do. Okay. Very much so. Yeah, I mean that dude's talented as all get out. Have, have you watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Love it. If you're not it's watching, insane. You know dude. that's another thing. Also, is what we should. I I watch and consume a tremendous amount of television because I love TV and film so much. Are you? What are you watching? Just real quick, as a little sidetrack. Well, I just binge the hell out of that. I also just binge seven seasons of uh, Californication. I don't know why. Californication. I, I went back. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every, the Coveney. I've been going back and like trying to study like you know directors and shows and what their angle was i i will say this if you take childish gambino and you take this is america you know remember that video yeah of course insane video like i'm not i i, I feel like tupac would have gotten down completely with what childish gambino was trying not trying was talking about because tupac was had a, a thing that he was trying to talk about if you look at early stuff he was talking about civil rights and he was talking about in a positive way, he just had an angry tone at all times. Do you times. think that, that this beef took over his music yes. entirely and just in his entire persona and just completely consumed him to the point where he that he was murdered? Yes. I think that all he was doing is... And not only that, the life he was leading with Suge Knight was insane. Just like the sex parties and all all the, the way that women were being treated in that environment that they were, he was a part of, that he was caught up, dude. Let's he talk about up. Marion Hugh. Barry? Marion Hugh Suge Knight Jr., born on April 19th, 1965 in Compton. Um, Co-founder of Death Row. And um, Do you know how he did that, by the way? He, please. He was doing like security for Dre, and Dre wanted to get out of his contract that he had with the record label, and Suge... Should go, just get the fuck out of it. And he's like, I can't. And he's like, I'll do it for you. And just basically strong-armed, like used... No, I remember watching that in that 
the NWA movie that was like watching him go and go into that record company. Yeah, and because he's a former football player, he's a huge, imposing figure. And then he builds Death Row into this powerhouse by signing Dr. Dre, Snoop, and Tupac. Yeah, well, he went to Dre and goes, I'll get you out of it. And then they founded Death Row together. And then they, I mean, he didn't get Pac till a little, they were already crushing with uh, Snoop and Dre, right? Sure. And then he gets Pac when he gets out of jail. He wasn't with Death Row before that, was he? No, he wasn't. No. So, like, Tupac no, wasn't Tupac. with Death Row till he got out of jail. And Suge's the one who flew up there, private jet, limo, gets him out of jail. He's like, let's bounce. And then, boom, takes him back, signs him. And then next thing you know, they're cranking out albums, straight up hate albums. When it was Dear Mama, though. Remember Dear Mama? Sure. You are appreciated. <laughs> Don't you know? Oh, my God. I love, I love that song. His influence on hip hop is undeniable with Death Row being a defining force in the genre during its peak. Legacy also intertwined with darker aspects of the music industry's history, feuds, violence, and legal. So wait, trouble. who was the other guy that Shug signed? Younger kid, signed him super young, became his legal guardian. Danny Boy? Oh, I don't know. Was it Danny Boy? Like, angelic voice, beautiful voice, super young when he signed him. At the Source Awards, when he goes up and accepts that award, he goes up with him. Here's the interesting thing. There was Danny Boy, I saw the story where he was saying, yeah, we're getting, we're, everyone's getting guns. Like, they had these guns laid out for, like, something that was happening, and Danny Boy went to go grab a gun. I think it might have been for that Vegas night, and Suge Knight goes, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're not touching guns. Put that away. Like, You're Danny Boy. And he was his legal guardian. Mm. Suge was his legal guardian and Danny Boy said like the last day the the like when Pac was in in the hospital that he would go and sing to him and he would sing these like like you know gospel to uh Tupac and loved listen to him oh, he had really? this amazing voice uh yeah. the DOC the DOC. DOC was a death row guy and then we also the diggy diggy doctor <laughs> right <laughs> And then uh, Snoop for me is on that big list, I think. Could I sound wider? I sound, Everyone says I sound like Alan Alda whenever I'm on a podcast. Really? But I really love Snoop. Snoop was great. No, Snoop, love Eminem and Dr. Dre, Chronic. Like, yeah, so Eminem's if I sick. had to pick between the two coasts, there's no doubt. I think Biggie as individual over Tupac, just personal taste, mm -hmm. and then easily West Coast over East Coast. Yeah. Um, who was the other one that I, I loved? And I don't give a shit how white it makes me sound. Remember Mr. Wendell? Who was that? That was... Um, Mr. Wendell? You don't remember Mr. Wendell? Mr. Wendell. Bob Bobalina. Mr. Bobalina, Mr. Bob... That's different. <laughs> That's a different band, isn't it? I don't know. It was Mr. Wendell. Oh, Mr. Wendell. Arrested Development. Arrested Development. Arrested Development always had a POV, and they were talk. They were singing and rapping for something. Mm. And I used to love South that. I, I, there came out, I, I wasn't a big Arrested Development guy. It's okay. That's fine. What about the TV show? <laughs> were you Arrested Development TV show no, fan? You know what? I, I, I do like it in bits, but I haven't watched it to the level like my kids have. Really, I You have to watch it. It's, it's, it's like the I, first. I like it. I, genius. I like it a lot. It's very funny. Buster? So funny. Mother says. Yep. Tony Hale, man. Where are we now with P. Diddy? Well, we're first, we, 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 so do, I think we did everything with Suge, right? I sure. We, we kind of covered Suge. He's a criminal right now. Is he in jail right now? Because he backed over somebody with a car. Um, 28 two, years. He's in jail. 28 years. Yeah. T 28 years in jail. 2015. He was charged with the murder and attempted murder following a hit-and-run incident that resulted in one death and one injury. In 2018, he pleaded no contest to voluntary manslaughter and was sentenced to 28 years in prison. Yeah. It's a long time. So you know what's crazy? On the way here, I'm talking to a buddy of mine who's... He has a buddy who's in real estate, and he said that they made a lot of their money in foreclosures and buying buildings that were going under, and Suge had done time in jail... And when he came out, one of his buildings, he was losing, he's going to lose his building. And my friend's friend met with him to buy the building and said he had one meeting with him. It was about 40 minutes long. And he left and he's like, I will 
never do. I, w- I don't want anything. I don't even want to be near that human being. That dude was a scary fucking dude. Yeah. And he was also, he had a mother and a father. He had a full family. He was the youngest. He was babied. And I saw a thing with his niece, and she was saying that when they were having family dinners, he would call ahead and said, I don't want this. I don't want this. I want my gravy this way. And they did it. Like, he was super babied. Isn't really? that crazy that, like, you can it just, you know, you can be in part of, like, a healthy, wonderful family and still go hard left. Do you think that that was it, though? Do you think he just was this black sheep and, it, like, with a great upbringing? I mean, he had, he, like, a really great – dude, he went to college. He went to, He went to UNLV on a scholarship. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe something happened down the line with him, but it's not like he was growing up in an environment where, you know, I mean, Tupac had both his parents for a while. They moved around a little bit. I, I don't sure I know exactly. I think sometimes people are just looking for a home, especially in the gang world. You know, it comes from people from broken homes. They need to find community. And and it's not like Suge didn't have that. He had like people who loved him and cared for him and knowing, babied him. Knowing what we know about <clears throat> if you had to pick between who's a worse person, who, P. Diddy with these allegations of sexual assault, a uh, lawsuit with the rape of this underage young lady. Um, I'll say this. Sex I- trafficking charges. His homes are being raided. He's got, he's drinking a mix between Molly and cocaine. He's got sex workers. And then you have Suge Knight, who is running over people in his car, strong arming, you know, everyone in business. And like a genuinely, you know. We also don't know what else that guy had going on. Sure. I For me, man, listen to this. I don't, I don't really give a fuck about murder that much. I'm like, you want to murder someone? All right. I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm just going to be like, yeah, I, I get it. I'm, Pro murder. I'm not. <laughs> if J. Larson. No, I am not pro murder. I what I am saying is I get it. I understand it, especially if you this is this is my problems with guns. And I want to get too political here. But here's my problem with guns. If you have access to gun, you're more likely to use a gun. Sure. And it's a lot easier. You know, it's like we talk about like in like uh, Internet shaming and stuff. People are sitting behind a computer. It's really easy to do it from here. But if you were face to face, which we can get into and if you have a gun, it's a lot easier to pull a trigger. You're f- so disconnected from the... If everyone had to stab each other, there'd be a lot less murders. You know what I mean? So murder... But when it comes to ra- rape for me, it, it's, it, disgust, it, it disgusts me and it gets me to a point where I can't even... It's hard to talk about. And you know what else I hate? Murder sometimes holds... I don't know what the standard is. I, can someone look up what our standard for murder is? I think it's like 25 years. For rape, it's like seven. Yeah. And... Murder, at least you, the person's gone. They don't have to ever deal with it. Rape, you take it, you take away, you change something. Uh, the whole thing is so, I, and musically, I never liked what Diddy was all about anyway. Because that, you know, so yeah. What about how Usher fits into all this? How, because he's brought up so many different artists. You have Mace, who goes to religion. Yeah, he's a preacher now. And he's a preacher. Do you think that was his only way out? Maybe. Yeah. And Usher was very young when he said, he never said what he saw, but he alluded to it. I saw that one interview. Did you see in the documentary where he's talking about, like, he goes, yeah, I was around a lot of things. Just around a lot of things. Now, he could have been talking about the uh, homosexuality that Diddy's been associated with, that he's probably been hiding because he's, God knows you can't bring that up. And then got maybe underage, maybe rape. Who knows? I don't think I don't think if it was rape, you would think Usher wouldn't be that cavalier about how he was not talking about it or like comically. When when you say sex trafficking, I automatically think you you think about okay, these guys are buying and selling. You immediately like go taken. to the like the last scene in Taken. Taken. Oh my god. Where it's all of those like Persian business, you know, yeah. oil magnates sitting around um, buying women in the middle of a room, you know, at this auction type of, of setting in a yeah. dark place. And you think about it's, I, I saw that just trillions, trillions of dollars are made by gangs and a crime element in sex trafficking on an annual basis. So you, when you think about P. Diddy's sex trafficking, and some people say he, he like is Epstein like, blackmailing people, cameras everywhere, 
in his entire house. So if he has a party and you do anything with anybody, you are on camera and it's a blackmail tape. Damn. And then he's got all this drug use going. So he's got a bunch of different ways he can blackmail you. Mm -hmm. And then he's got all these girls there. So that was like this this other business that he's in. He's also got all of these young stars that he's discovering and strong. If you're a young star Mm -hmm. and you get in with the P. Diddy people, Mm -hmm. I mean... Would you just walk away? I mean, can you walk away from something like that? Well, think about if you were, I mean, Usher was 14 or 15 at the time. Think about, I moved to L.A. when I was 24 to get into the business. I didn't know I wanted to be a comedian, just to get into the business. And if I had, if Bill Cosby had been like, hey, come out on the road with me, you'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go on the road, not knowing what he was doing, right? Sure. And then all of a sudden you're in this community and he's telling you like, yeah, I was with this woman last night. He probably doesn't come out right away and tell you. He and then you're into pro- it. Yeah, easy into it. And then you're seeing some things and you're hearing some things. And then all of a sudden you're caught up in it. It's the only thing you exist around. You know what I mean? Your success is completely because Tupac. You didn't go do a drive-by or beat someone to death to become a blood. You became a blood. Then you think you need to do the act. Who the fuck knows? All I know is people that are young and impressionable, you know, this is why they say, what. that's why grooming is a thing. You're a frog in a boiling pot of water. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm saying that. Is that you, a thing? You get eased in. Like if you try to put oh. a frog in a, an already <clears throat> boiling pot of water, it's yes. going to jump out. I've never heard that. But if you put, uh, you know, the water to boil, set the water to boil, and leave the frog in there, it's going to die. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening with all of these kids that are being groomed. Um, Justin Bieber, also part of this group. Well, I mean, because Usher found him. And there's allegedly a video. I was talking to people about this yesterday. Has anyone, <clears throat> Aaron, have you seen this? The Justin Bieber video? I don't watch Justin Bieber videos. No, thanks, it's, Aaron. It, it would be it, it, Jimmy World. Have you seen the Jimmy World video? All of them, yeah. All right, so um, <laughs> the, I, I'm not talking about a music video. I'm talking about this horrible video where I think he is um, looks up from like going down on a guy. Oh, really? Yeah. First of all, I, I don't understand, and I, I and I have not seen this. But this isn't this horrible. Is, it's just that he might also. But you he know, was underage, be... yeah, and like it, it. Oh, he was being forced into it. I believe so. Oh, shit. so it is horrible. It's yes, all, that it's is. All I, I fucking didn't horrible. Know, you just told me that I didn't know I was underage, and he was being forced into it. No, I just if thought people you were are saying gay, that he was gay. gay. Yeah, whatever. Bi, whatever. Who cares about gay? I'm talking about underage, impressionable kids being forced into situations that they don't have any control over. Yeah. See, it's it's all terrible. So, who is a worse person, Suge Knight or P Diddy? A Diddy for me. Diddy. 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 If all the stuff is true. Daddy's house. Whatever. His name was Puff Daddy at the time. I mean, it's it's all trash. Yep. So where I, is he now? Sean P. Diddy comes. Current whereabouts have been a subject of speculation since his private jet was traced to Antigua. I thought he never left Florida is what I heard. Amid federal raids of his homes in Los Angeles, Miami, due to all these allegations, while the exact location of Diddy following these incidents has not been confirmed, reports indicate that his jet went off the radar after being spotted in Antigua. Here's the other thing. All right, so let's take the three. Do you think, I, obviously, there was no real beef between Biggie and Tupac. Would you agree to that? I think it was manufactured. something that manufactured that something that got out of control with a lot of different elements involved in this media hype that we're talking about. But everything points, and even Biggie's own words, Biggie did not want any part of this beef. And they were actually, before these murders, uh, before Tupac's murder, were going to meet and squash the whole thing. Yeah. And Biggie rapped about Tupac in one of his songs about banging his wife and he wasn't even saying something negative about Pac it was almost like he was making fun of himself Biggie so I don't think I think Biggie was like the whole time like nah man everything's cool I don't Mm -hmm. think he knew about anything that was going on first of all we didn't even get into talking about the fact that like Death Row was hiring LAPD for like security and stuff and most likely 
Biggie was killed by cops, L.A. cops that were paid. Ugh. I mean, that's most likely what happened. Biggest victim in all of this, you know, the victims here. Yeah, who are the victims, you uh, think? Biggie. Doesn't want anything to do with this beef at all. Sure. Didn't act in any way against, I think. Tupac. Tupac. He just showed up to go make music and got but, robbed. But he was the more shot. aggressive of the two in terms of the feud, trying to be with the Crips, be something that he, he sure, but he didn't wasn't. have anywhere to go. I think he wanted, you know. Also, he was raised by a Black Panther. Black Panthers were moving in a positive way, but they were doing it in a very un, you know what I mean, positive way. I would guess. I don't well, know. I think so. He had that ingrained in him that he needed to. It'll be really interesting to see how this P. Diddy thing plays out, where he ends up, what the charges are. Right now with this raid, we're like, what are the results of the raid? What do they find? What do they have on him? I know that one, a former Syracuse basketball player, his drug mule was arrested in Miami. So he's got a lot of different... It wasn't Billy Owens, was it? It was not... Don't you dare drag Billy Owens. Was it Ronnie Cycli? It was not Ronnie Cycli. Was it Sherman Douglas? It was a scrub, guys. 17 a... minutes. He played 17 total minutes. 17, 17 minutes. total minutes. So he, he got in there. He was a walk-on. Then he transferred to some other D2 school. How does that walk on get? What's that guy's backstory? How does that guy get involved with P. Diddy as a drug mule? Everybody wants to be good, around good basketball players, drugs. man. What's that? Good Syracuse drugs, all the designer drugs up there. Mm, that's right. So, Syracuse drugs. So, you, you think P. Diddy, again, he has a vodka. He's got all of his music label. He's got this Revolt TV that he sold off shares to an anonymous buyer right before all this goes down. He's got so much money. Mm -hmm. Still needs to make a little drug and sex trafficking money on the side. I don't know. Don't you think this? Do you think this comes a level of? I mean, we see this in our business when dudes get Green. money and get rich and get famous. That I'm not saying they need to resort to. Uh, trafficking and shit sure. like that, but you see them, you know, they get bored with life. I mean, so I don't know. Debauchery, it just becomes a level of like excess because you have nothing else, nothing better to do. I don't fucking know, man. I, I don't know. I'm, I am very interested to see what comes of this because you look at dudes like that Jeffrey Epstein, that dude was filthy rich and yet this was like his kink. You know, maybe this is just mm. Diddy's crazy king and you just have to look at it like that like that scene at the end of taken who are these what are, who are these people that this is what you this is your satisfaction like I, I don't get it yeah i'm just glad it's not me yeah i'm glad it's not it's, me too it's expensive with all these yachts you know what i have heard though i have a friend whose friend my buddy his girlfriend they're friends she's a girl she's a dominatrix oh and she said 100 percent of her clients are rich powerful men that no one ever tells them no, and they just want to fucking be humiliated and told no and like beat down. So there's that's where I'm lucky. I, I get that at home. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting conversation about um, who who's just the the most horrible person here, and it's <clears throat> clearly Diddy Combs. And again, I think when we talk about sex trafficking, we're talking about. Is he doing this for other people or is it all just it's him for himself? You know, and you're talking about I think it's part of the, I think first of all, trafficking, like I said, you can be you can ha get someone on a private jet in New York and fly him to Philadelphia, and that's trafficking. You've trafficked them, you've moved them. Like that woman who sued him, the first one that came out. Cassie. Yeah. First I, I also want to say if this you guys are interested in this whole thing, go watch documentaries and look into this. It's crazy how deep this goes. There's an you know, eight part doc out there on this entire topic. But I think it's like, you know, think about it. You're the guy who's got the big house. It's got the booze. You got the drugs. You got the women. Would you get this? You know what I mean? That's part of it. It comes into it like it's oh, it's Yeah. Who's going to be there? Famous people. What's, what else is going to be there? Booze, drugs, women. You're like, oh, where'd you get the women? Psh, don't worry about it. Let me tell you where I got. It. You know what I mean? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Scary. It is. Remember just having a video, arc video arcade in your house was a cool way to get people over? Dude, I got Miss Pac-Man and Galaga. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm in. Sit down kind? Yeah, like we're at a pizzeria. Uh, I don't know. I like it. I like it boring. Yeah. I like simple. I don't need anything. I'm into gardening. I want to garden, yeah. 
But don't you have beef with your fucking like rodents in your? Oh yeah, I'm fighting squirrels left and right. I got raccoons trying to sneak in there. Everybody's trying to come in. Gophers. I had a, what uh, the ground squirrel, the ground rodent people, the company that came out, called it a perfect storm <coughs> of ground rodents. That's what I'm up against. Yeah, that's what you're taking down. Yeah. But I'll do you ever find them. yourself in any comedic I'll beefs? Back over them in a car. <laughs> they get out in the street. I'll sugar night the fuck out of those yeah, squirrels. Fuck those squirrels. I love those videos where you see uh, a rat get run over and then they cut right to two cats driving, just bobbing their heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I did get, I avoided a beef, I think, uh, uh, comedy wise. I got really lazy when it comes to when I write jokes, something happens. I embellish a shitload. Same. That's how we do it. That's how we all do it. It's not a, a, the type of embellishment. It's just all fictional. I go off. I could I could name it. A... Sometimes I something happens in my life, and I take the true story, and then I think about what would I wanted that situation sure. to have happened because, yeah. it, like, if I have cartoon world, you yeah. know what I mean, where anything can happen, and you then that's the story script. I tell. You yeah. write a script. It's a exactly. script. So you write a script, and so I got lazy with my script writing, and that mm-hmm. got me in a little bit of a beef. And how'd you handle it? I called the guy. Talked to the guy on the phone. Guess like, what? Like a grown man. Like a grown man. And beef over. Beef over, man. I just said, uh, hey, man, I'm an idiot. Yeah. I got lazy. I should have written that more. What happened is I didn't change enough of what happened. And it, it looked like I was bagging on this guy, but just a fictional version completely took over. Dude, horse's mouth, dude. Horse's mouth. You know what I mean? Right. If you don't get it from the horse's mouth, anytime someone tells me something negative about someone Hearsay. that I yeah. know, and I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm sorry, that's sorry that happened to you. It's not my perspective. Like, now, yeah. if it was something horrible, yeah, like, and it was proven, then sure. You know what I mean? I hear people, you know, especially in our business, we've see, I've seen a lot of friends get me tooed and get called out. And I'm like, all right, well, how much of this? Then, you you know, depending on the situation, you have to make a assessment and be like, all right, I understand. You know what? I, you know, and you just, you got to base it off of what you know or what, you know. Anyway, I could have just got myself in hot water. <laughs> Try hard and be nice. Let's talk about where the show is going. Because we have a lot of beefs that we're going to get into. You know who I really want to get on is um, I want to get Dane on. Dane Cook. Uh huh. I'd love him to come in. Okay. And I want to talk about what happened with his money and his half brother. Mm-hmm. That's one we haven't talked about. We have a bunch of stuff that's really fun. Dane and I grew up two towns away from each other. Oh, that's amazing. So he should definitely come on. I mean, we should reach out. And. Um, yeah, I think we, we are with this show is going to continue to evolve. Write us. You can follow us on social media. It's the Dust Up Podcast. And um, on we Instagram, have it's the different. Dust Up Pod. Um, no, the Dust Up Podcast on Instagram. And the Dust Up Pod on TikTok. TikTok. The Dust Up. Um, and then the Dust Up on YouTube on TikTok. Yeah, that's right. You can also um, call us or email us, the Dust Up Pod at gmail.com. And uh, it's 925-727-3878. That's 925-727-3878. Tell us your personal beefs or beefs that you've heard of and POVs or you've been adjacent to, and we'll give our, our take on it. Yep. Rate, review, subscribe. Our theme song is provided by the Flat Trackers, an amazing band out of Australia, and they will take you out. Let's get dusted. <laughs> Thank you.